All right, guys, Murph's here. And today we're gonna talk about shotgun barrel length and its impact upon performance. Now in shotguns, as has been mentioned before, we have a very different relationship in a lot of different ballistic type aspects that we don't normally find in dedicated single projectile type weapon systems like pistols and rifles. Now specifically looking at rifles, whenever we talk about barrel length, we are concerned about the amount of powder burn that we're going to get, getting full burn out of the cartridge, making sure that we get every bit of velocity that we can get out of it. Now, eventually, if you make the barrel long enough, you can hit a point of diminishing return where you're not really getting any additional velocity and you're adding weight and this very long profile to the weapon system overall that's going to make it a little ungainly and all that type of thing. But specifically, with getting more distance out of it, more barrel length does not necessarily indicate longer range or better accuracy. There's a, there's a trade-off. There's a fine point in that. Take 300 Blackout, for example, where I don't want to get too deep into rifles right now, but just to kind of frame the overall subject, 300 Blackout is commonly considered to have pretty much burned up all of its powder within about nine and a half inches of barrel. Now this leads a lot of people to tell you that you don't need a longer than nine and a half inch barrel 300 blackout or you, do, you can't go shorter than nine and a half inches because you're losing all the potential powder burn. However, I would hazard a guess that these very same people have 16 inch AR-15s in their closet when the 5.56 round was built around a 20 inch barrel. So at a certain point, you kind of got to figure out the trade-off for yourself between that distance, between the length of the barrel and the actual amount of velocity and all that kind of stuff that you're going to get out of it. You have to fix a distance in your mind as to whether, as to what's going to make any of this matter. And twist rate, bullet profile, bearing surface, all this type of stuff is going to play into the accuracy, long distance, longevity, all that kind of stuff in rifles. Key thing here. Now let's talk about shotguns. Now, if we're talking about your average shotgun, uh, a non-NFA item in this case, so something over 18 inches, you don't really see a lot of difference in velocity between barrels. There's some distance, there's some difference, it's just fairly negligible. Already right off the bat, we're talking about fairly light pressures in shotguns, uh, just over 10,000, around like 12,000 PSI, something along those lines, where in rifles, we're getting into 50,000 and beyond PSI in pressures, right? And velocities for shotguns are not that interesting. Really, they kind of amass similar to uh, a lot of Magnum, like handgun cartridges, velocities wise. So that's not terribly interesting either. And that's gonna be entirely based upon shell length as well. So getting a longer barrel isn't getting you any more powder burn. It's not really giving you that much more velocity overall. What, why? Why does anyone have anything longer than an 18 inch barrel? And what about the NFA items or the any other weapons or any of those types of things? How do they perform? Well, overall, if we're looking at shotgun range, what actually impacts shotgun range comes down to a couple of things. First and foremost, choke. Now choke being the amount of constriction in the board, you have things ranging from cylinder choke, which is literally just the tube. There is no choke. It's actually very misleading to call it cylinder choke all the way up to things like extra full or turkey extra full chokes, which are incredibly tight. And the whole idea being, and the whole idea derived from choke is that you're compressing that shot load together so that it takes more distance and time for it to be able to expand out. Shotgun shot in general is going to expand. Now, it's not like in the movies where it instantaneously expands as soon as it exits the board. There's, there's a, a time function that's involved with that. As it moves down range, the, sh the shot spreads out over distance, but it does, not, it does not happen rapidly. And there's a lot of people who have quite a few misconceptions about how long it actually takes. You hear a lot of statements of like, you don't have to aim a shotgun at close range. When in all actuality, if you want to get a favorable engagement, yes you do. If, if you're talking about indoors type fighting, you're going to need to aim your shotgun. It's, it's not a, an area effect weapon in the same type of sense as you might think at greater distance. What you're thinking about when you say you don't really have to aim is at greater distance, and even then, you still got to get it close. Now, there are other aspects that affect shotgun ballistics, I and mean, I discussed them actually at great length, or relatively great length, in my 10 gauge versus 12 gauge video, where the shot column plays a huge part. That is gonna give you a front to the shot cloud, as I refer to it, moving down range. Now, for those of you who don't fully understand what I mean when I say cloud, a shotgun pattern overall, that the wave of shot moving through the air has a, 
height, length, and width associated with it. There's there's multiple, there's three dimensions overall to this this shot pattern that's moving down range. And length of shell is going to impact the length aspect of it. Diameter of shell, so 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 20 gauge, that is going to affect the height and width of it. Those aspects, what the what the front of that shot is going to look like. And then as we move into three, three and a half inch shells, that's going to extend its overall length. That's going to play a part in the overall spread. Your shot size is going to do the same kind of thing. Now there's a dynamic that has to be struck here because if you think about it, ultimately a tighter pattern is going to give you more impacts on target at greater range. That's the name of the game in shotguns. We're not talking about being able to take a single projectile and project at a mile. We're talking about being able to take a bunch of projectiles and put hits on target at something 50, 60, 70 yards away. And we need to be able to get enough hits on that target to be able to actually bring it down. So in a lot of times, when we're talking about it in a sporting type sense, we're talking about uh, at the longer range aspect of it, ducks, geese, maybe turkey, uh, depending on if you're feeling froggy and you have a really good load in your shotgun. Now, there's a certain number of impacts that are the correct number of impacts that you need. And that's going to impact how far you can shoot and what shot size you're going to need. So say, for example, on ducks, we want to see four impacts inside of vital areas in order to be able to have a successful duck hunt at that point. You need to be able to select a shot size and length of shell to give you the velocity that you need to be able to project to that distance to be able to get that the proportionate number of hits that you need. There's there's a certain certain dynamic that has to be struck there when we, whenever we're talking about the possibility of being able to make these hits. So with this you might say, well, if I had a three and a half inch twelve gauge loaded up with seven and a half shot, then I would totally be able to take down like everything because I'd have so much shot in the cup. Well, I mean, you gotta be able to reach it still too. And whenever we're talking about energy imparted upon an, an object, we're talking about a formula between mass and velocity. Well, if I diminish the mass, I diminish the amount of energy that I'm carrying into the target. I don't necessarily get good hits in those vital areas at that point. I get more of a wounding effect. So great, I have more shot, but it's also taking more shot to be able to do the work that I need. That's why you see duck hunters use heavier shots. That Really, that's why you see hunters use heavier shots. So for turkeys, my preferred shot size is number five. I've found that to be a really good trade-off uh, with the shell that I've picked out to be a requisite number of impacts, and I've been able to extend that particular load out to 45 yards and successfully drop a bird with number five shot. It was, it was a bit of a risky shot and I probably shouldn't have taken it, but it wound up being successful. For upland game birds and stuff like that, I used to prefer fours. Lately, I've actually been noticing that uh, out of my current shotguns, I've been having a lot of six shot pattern better. And that's really where the crux of this matter comes down to. It's not barrel length. It, it plays into choke, but really your shot your, your shell selection at this point is what's going to determine whether or not you have the proportionate number of hits that are going to be required to be able to take that animal down at the distance that you plan on engaging at. So this means that you actually have to wind up spending a lot of time out on the range patterning your shots to make sure that that load is going to work well. It is very interesting to look at a lot of the information out there on different loads being patterned out of very similar shotguns and seeing drastically different results. It, there's, there's a lot of information out there. Some shotguns like some loads better than others. That's it, just a reality to it. And it's a difficult thing to pick out. It's not necessarily like, well, this shotgun seems to like velocities ranging in this direction. Well, that, that doesn't necessarily take into account the amount of shot that it's able to contain for that particular shot size, which is also going to impact your pattern. Uh, the type of wadding that is used. You know, the uh, past couple of years, there's been a, a, a lot of research put into things like flight control wads and all that kind of stuff. That's going to impact your your pattern. I don't. I've not done enough research on them to be able to say one way or the other if it's going to be a positive or a negative impact. But it's definitely going to be an impact. It's it's something that is affecting the formulation of that pattern. It's going to have an impact. That's going to play into whether or not you're able to make good hits at the distances that you want to be able to make hits at. Now, 
running along that same overall concept, you start taking in different types of shots. So steel shot, heavy shot, tungsten, lead, buckshot, all that type of, you know, buckshot's getting more into size. But when you're talking about plated buckshot versus just straight lead buckshot, that's going to play a part into how well a load patterns out of your shotgun. These are the dynamics that we need to talk about whenever we're talking about range and performance of shotgun shells, not necessarily barrel length. So with that being the case, why is every shotgun not an 18 and a half inch barreled shotgun? Well, that's playing into a little bit more of a, uh, a personal preference aspect of the handling of a shotgun. So this is something that kind of like recoil or weight considerations and stuff like that is a very subjective thing. But there are certain aspects based in science like balance and all that kind of stuff that plays into how barrel length is going to influence your decisions on shotguns. So with a longer barrel shotgun, like say a 20 inch, excuse me, a 28 inch or a 32 inch shotgun, you're gonna have more weight out towards the end of the gun, away from the balance, away from the center point of the shotgun. So as you're swinging that shotgun on a fast moving target, like say, I don't know, uh, ducks, or uh, you're going after some doves or something like that, that longer barrel length is going to make it easier for you to be able to track and then also swing through the target and be able to continue to spread that shot along its path. That's why so many of those birding type shotguns are longer overall barrels. Now, take that same concept and try to apply it to upland game where you might be going through thick brush of some sort, trying to pursue rabbits or, or grouse or something along those lines. A 28 inch barrel is gonna be very cumbersome. You're gonna catch it on bushes and, and trees and vines and all that kind of stuff. When you consider that you're not necessarily going to be swinging your shotgun along the flight path of an animal as much as you're going to have a fairly short snapshot to be able to attempt to get shots on it. At this point, a shorter barrel is going to be a lot more successful for you overall. It's going to be easier for you to be able to get that shot up there and kind of do a little bit more point type shooting where now we have more of the weight on those shorter barrels coming back towards the stock, which makes maneuvering for point type shooting a little bit easier. Same with like turkeys and stuff like that. Same overall kind of concept. Having that shorter barrel, a little more weight towards you allows you to better be able to orient and point that shotgun at the target. Also, that works out in home defense type situations. If you've actually, let's say that, you know, I myself, I have no children. So if somebody breaks in my house, I can go ahead and barricade myself, call the police, and then if anyone tries to come through the door, I can lay them out cold. And I can use a longer shotgun for that because it doesn't matter. I am not maneuvering to my opponent. Now, if you had kids or other family members in the home, and if in the case of a home invasion, you were gonna have to secure them and make sure that they were safe, you don't have that same consideration. At that point, you need a shorter weapon system, a shorter barrel length of shotgun. This is where we get into the 18 and below lengths of shotgun become much more advantageous to you at that point. Now, as we get to the shorter end of the spectrum overall, we do start to have an effect on the actual spread, especially when we get down into the SBS short barrel shotgun or kind of the any other weapon type category we really start to play with the dynamic of not really being able to put a choke into the gun, which means that we're pretty much working with improved cylinder. And we're also going to have a negative impact on how tight, how much time the shot has to kind of be able to range itself before it's exiting out of the bore. And it's generally going to have a fairly open pattern at that point. But those weapon systems are meant for close range stuff. And in the case of the super shorties, you're primarily talking about breaching and not so much of a defensive weapon at that point. Or when we're talking about defensive weapon, we were talking about like a get off me gun, which a extremely short barrel shotgun would not be my choice for that overall. Personally, you know, to each their own, you guys do whatever you feel comfortable with, but that would not be my selection personally. So, huh. I think we pretty much hit all the high points on that guys. This was a, uh, this is a fairly short video overall. So I hope you guys found this interesting. I, I remember growing up and kind of being of the opinion that barrel length has some sort of impact on distance. And that's why we use longer barrels to hunt like grouse or not grouse, but like ducks and all that kind of stuff. But in all reality, as long as the shotgun swings through, you can pick a shorter gun 
You, you can go shorter if you want to. You don't have to use 32 inch length shotgun shotguns to be able to, to hunt birds up in the sky. You just gotta, it's a handling aspect and that's a very subjective thing overall. Now, if someone really pressed me and said, hey, you have to pick one barrel length. What's the, mo what's the best all around? One of the issues, guys, whenever you try to be a jack of all trades is that you're a master of none. So like a 22 to 24 inch barrel might be extremely handy and capable of being able to go from sitting out in the field trying to pass shoot geese to trying to negotiate through heavy brush to be able to go after rabbits. It's not going to do either of those very well. As well as home defense type stuff. If you have to pie corners and stuff like that, I would prefer to not do it with a 24 inch barreled shotgun. So in shotguns, really the best answer if you're trying to have a do-all type setup is to have multiple barrels, if I'm being completely honest. All right, guys, that actually covers all of my thoughts on this particular subject. I hope you guys found this useful, and have a good day.